Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this Big Bad Barry episode, where I try to inform you with the best information I possibly can. Alright, here's the short attention span version. The GFS says it's going to be a weird tropical storm category 1, WTF, Friday 7pm landfall, Icon, category 1, Saturday 6pm landfall. Nav Gem, Category 1, Saturday 6 p.m. Landfall, Euro, Category 1, Saturday 6 p.m., GFS Legacy, Category 1, Saturday 6 p.m., CMC, Category 1, Saturday 12 p.m., NAM, Category 1, Friday 3 p.m., they all agree it is somewhere near the central area of Louisiana. People will give you shit for even showing the NAM. But it's like, look, dude, why even have the thing if you're not allowed to use it? And it is the only one that is showing water temperatures in the Gulf near the tropical storm slash hurricane at 92 degrees. And I think that might be the most accurate of the water temperatures right now. It is 96 degrees in Houston right now and expected to get to 100 degrees on Friday. The GFS has two fingers in its nose and one fingers in its butt and has created some type of weird hybrid lopsided thing, which oddly enough is what cranky weather guy says is going to happen. That's why he doesn't think it's going to be a major hurricane in any way because it's going to be a lopsided fool like Quasimodo. No disrespect, Quasimodo. I woke up in a bad mood. I think I'm a little burned out. I definitely needed a vacation and my sexual frustration levels are beyond anything quantifiable. I know you don't want to hear about that. Twitter is also down. This is important because I always say that Twitter is the best place for absolute up to the minute information during storms, earthquakes, floods. Other than that, it's usually a political cesspool of divide and conquer run by robots. As I've been stating for about a week, we would watch the yellow continue to grow. Now the yellow is turning into pink. As you can see down here, there's the pink. There's the pink in case you're pink visually finding impaired. If you stare at it too long, it looks like lips. But yeah, this is going to be a damaging, devastating, dangerous, and deadly flooding system. Now the GFS puts Gulf waters around 87 degrees on Friday near landfall time. And that's the whole thing is if we have temperatures ranging from 87 degrees to 90 degrees in the Gulf and this thing is going to sit and spin for anywhere from 36 to 48 more hours, you better pray. Pray for non-hurricane development. Now we're looking at the King Euro which is bringing its landfall almost to New Iberia, the exact place I guessed several days ago. This would be a larger storm. And I realize now that if this thing brings major damaging destruction with rainfall, flooding, broken levees, broken dams, but only reaches category one, I may lose all my scientific reputation and points. Um, I'm prepared for that. I'm still sticking with category three. Though, I mean, there's a chance it won't get there, but the damage will still be category three with the rainfall and flooding. The Euro seems to be the optimist with 85 degree temperatures at around landfall. So it's Thursday, right now it's 2.43, so Thursday to Friday, so that's 48 hours. And this also brings it close to New Iberia, the place I guessed near Emma. This is the GFS, which oddly enough, even though it shows it as a lopsided thing, still brings it to a 988 pressure, which would be a Category 1 hurricane. This is today the 11th, and that is just a shit ton of rain, man. This is the icon, which is also showing a lopsided lumpy thing with purple in the middle. 
also near New Iberia. And remember, the worst side of the flooding is always going to be on the right side. So most of the flooding will get pulled in through here. So a situation like this would be devastating for New Orleans. They were already started to get flooding yesterday. This is the nav jam, which is almost the cheeriest of all the models. Uh, it would barely be a cat one hurricane. And it is also lopsided with not heavy rain bands. King Euro makes it tight, brings it right to the middle of the foot. That is Louisiana. GFS Legacy 986, which would be the lowest of the millibars of all of them. And it would have purple in the middle, but would still be kind of a lopsided thing. CMC 997, still kind of a lopsided thing takes it to the toes of Louisiana. This would be a better situation for New Orleans as most of the water, if it continued to go straight, would end up in Alabama and Mississippi. It's going to be a bad deal pretty much for somebody and probably a lot of people. Rain and water is always the number one killer. Turn around, don't drown. Um, if you are going to be in any of these areas, please check uh, the river levels the levels of the escape routes. I know that they've said a stay in place, don't evacuate, which I think is kind of weird. I think it's really weird. Especially considering you've got the Mississippi majorly flooding, and it's definitely majorly flooding at the Mississippi River at Baton Rouge. So if this area... I mean, and the storm is pretty much going to go right up flooding spots. So this is going to cause major damage, major trouble, uh, loss of life, probably. I question the stay in place, don't evacuate idea. I can almost guarantee you that rich people are probably evacuating. Now we're looking at the 48 hour rain precipitation total. And if you'll notice... For 48 straight hours, this storm system will be bringing some type of rain and precipitation. Uh, putting the two X's by it makes it look like a cartoon doom. And why are you calling it Huron 2? That's weird. Anyway, but you can see the heavy, it's going to bring heavy rain to Louisiana, Florida, Mississippi, Alabama. For at least two days. This two day event. Now watch this thing explode. And tell me if it gives you the heebie jeebies. Or makes you feel all safe, comfortable and confident. If you are in the area. I mean just. Wow. Wow. And double wow. Alright. So now we're looking at. The RGB model, you get a lot of heavy precipitation. You can see that our storm is pulsing up, and over a 48 hour period, we're probably going to have anywhere from 8 to 10 more pulses where the storms grow big and they die down, they grow big and they die down. And any time during one of those pulses is when the rapid intensification could possibly happen over those hot tub waters of heat. Alright, now it's smoking if you got them time. I'm going to light up one. Uh, we're taking a look at the cloud totals. Whatever. I've already put out a lot of information, so I can probably start acting like a jerk now if I want to. Is that okay with you? All right, here's a close look at this. Crap, I hit the wrong button. Now, I was doing good, and then the whole thing just went to pot. Legalize it. Oh, you can see it rotating, man. That is total rotation. Attempting, starting, trying to happen. Like I said, most people, and most pros, definitely think Cat1 is the best it could do. I'm sticking with the call I made on the 5th. Six days ago. Technically, I've been covering the storm since the third. 
uh, on the third, the very first video I made about this, it showed a Category 3, this storm reforming as it enters out the Atlantic by Katia, and then going to hit Nova Scotia's Category 3. That feels like years away. We will cover that later, <clears throat> but still a possibility. Yeah, it's... It didn't develop overnight last night, so that is good. So we will definitely have to watch tonight. But I would stay very aware. I still have a bad feeling about this thing. And here comes the really bad news. Are you ready for it? Uh, I tease you. The bad news is until next. But here is look at the rainfall that is coming in now. You're already seeing a tail in banding. And the heavier chunk is headed towards West Texas. All right, so I'm a genius. That may piss you off, but it's true. Okay, so this is hurricane season. is totally reminding me of 2017. If that is correct, here we have Tropical Storm Barry, a.k.a. Harvey Part 2, and that this would make this Irma Part 2. And we are about six weeks ahead of schedule on the timeline. So... I'm going to have to rethink all my hurricane predictions, but right now, these are just weird coincidences, man. Okay. All right now it's taking it low, but the lower it goes, the better chance it has to curve up into the Gulf or up the East Coast. Check Bernie Reno out on AccuWeather. He's good at all the Bay of Campeche longitude, longitude latitude stuff. And always have multiple sources to check your information with. Sure, yeah, I've been extremely hot and hurricane call since Hurricane Matthew, but my luck could run out at any time. But in the same theory, my love life has been atrocious since December 4th, 2017, and in theory, it could turn around any minute. Meh. Yeah, we've got this. This is the tail of this giant storm. It looks like it's detaching. And just this whole, the overall system is weird. Everything's been weird. And look, they zap it with a machine gun. Zip, zip, pew, pew, pew. Pow, pow, pow. Right there. So yeah, Hurricane Harvey. 17th to September 2nd. And then Irma would be August 30th to September 12th. So they did kind of overlap each other in a weird way. Here's the proposed wind field. It's like a avocado pear and then here we're just looking at a big map how, how, how do you feel about that earthquake watch for Chile but they've been having earthquakes pretty much all year and so that's the whole thing is I know the winter snow weenies turn into wind weenies and um but the, it's the rain that's going to cause damage. And this thing is just going to sit and spin for two more days. So the rain levels are just going to be atrocious. I think they've been under, undersold. So either way, I still say people need to definitely watch out for a strengthening of this thing. It could be up to Category 3, if not higher. And then, the no matter what, the rain and water levels and the problematic shit that comes along with it is going to be super nasty. And it looks like we have... Our next candidate for hurricane season. Coming up next. Man, I need a vacation. Okay, so I want to thank everybody out there for being awesome and amazing. I will stay on top of this. Hopefully my hackers will leave me alone. Uh, thank you to the Eclasticles family. Dang, did I say that right? Eclasticles. Eclasticles. You guys are amazing. You guys are amazing. Actually sent me enough money so I could go get my guitar amp and PS4 out of the pawn shop. So I can go get a ride. My guitar is still stuck in Nassaville. That was a fucking weird story. Oh, I said the F word. Now people are going to pee out their pants. Anyway, I love you guys. You guys are fantastic. Sorry I'm grumpy. It's just a weird age to be a male. It's almost like if you wake up with the urge to cuddle or make out. And it's like. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to shut up now. Peace out. Talk to you all soon.